Exercise seven is just another example of a hypothesis test. So if you felt comfortable with the worksheet in class, um, you really don't need to watch this, but um, either way, I suggest trying this first, then watching the video, or at least kind of scrolling through it to make sure your answers are the same as mine, as opposed to just watching me do a third hypothesis test slowly. All right, so if you really wanted to watch me do a third hypothesis test slowly, I will. Um, as you read through this question stem, which you should have already done on your own, we have this thing here saying that previous records indicate 30% of all passenger cars fail inspection the first time through. So we're given a percentage. We do have this thing saying all, which is kind of leading us to believe maybe a real P, but then it's from records. So uh, for now, let's just call it P and then come back. In a random sample, of 150 sports cars. Now we have our N, we know we're dealing with our evidence. Uh, 50 of them failed inspection the first time through. So there's our number of successes in our sample of 150. Is there sufficient evidence to indicate that the portion of first fa uh, failures for sports cars is higher than for all passenger cars? So you can see all the stuff in red was about passenger cars and we're comparing sports cars, which is our random sample here, to those passenger cars. So um, we are gonna treat this like a real P, like it's the real deal, and we're gonna use it as our claim to value. So if we go to set this up, our null is that the P, which is the true proportion of first failures for sports cars is the same as it is for passenger cars. And we've been told passenger cars have a failure rate of 30%. Our alternative, still about that true proportion of first failures for sports cars, still about that 30% that all passenger cars that we're comparing to. And here's where we look and we see, indeed, we do have a keyword saying we have a direction that we wanna be looking at. We think sports cars are more likely to fail, so we'll use a greater than. So basically it's the same as passenger cars or it's higher than passenger cars. Excellent. So if we calculate our test statistic, this is when we would go to our formula sheet, proportion hypothesis test, we would end up with, uh, oops, Z is equal to P hat minus our null value all over the standard deviation that we would get from our null value. Uh, and note here, we when we were in confidence interval land, we called this a standard error because we had the P hat and the Q hat. Uh, and now we're back to calling this a standard deviation um, because we're making this assumption that P is really, I want to use a different color. We're making this assumption that P is really 0.3. So if P is really 0.3, right, if that's our assumption, then this is the real deal standard deviation from 6.1. So we can go ahead, plug and chug on into this. Uh, we would need to go figure out what our P hat is, right? This is our X over N, 30 over 150. And here's where we learn a valuable lesson. If you are to round your P hats to two decimal places or something less, then you're gonna get in trouble. You're gonna have um, values that are off in terms of the decimal places. So you wanna keep at least four decimals on everything in this calculation. And I suggest doing this all at once in your calculator if that's what you're doing. So we're basically saying, how different is 33.33333 repeating from 30%? Obviously, it, it is higher, right? That's our goal. We wanted to show it's higher, and it is. We do have evidence for what we want to prove, but is it enough evidence? Is it different enough that we can say that sports cars are more likely to fail, right, or have a higher proportion of first failure rates? So there's our calculation. If I'm doing this in the little calculator, I would press that sweep fraction button because you guys have a sweep fraction button. Uh, I don't on this big ass calculator, so I'm going to use parentheses to separate the numerator from the denominator. Bah! Um, hope I didn't get the divide symbol. If you have the big calculator, one thing you want to make sure of is that if you don't have the math type on, you will have a parentheses. And what I see a lot of students do is close the parentheses after they just put one thing in there. That's only going to take the square root of 0.3. So I know I have parentheses here, 
but you want to make sure I don't even use parentheses in my calculation. I just do 0.3 times 0.7 divided by 150. Looks like our value should be a z score of 0.89. And I do tend to round my z scores to two decimal places because if I'm using the table, if I'm someone with a small calculator, the best I can look up is two decimal places. And on that worksheet that we just had, I think the Z was like 1.91 something, something, something. And it should have gotten rounded up to 1.92. A lot of people who don't round when they write down their Z score looked up 1.91. Uh, I know you guys haven't turned it in yet, most of you. But from past experiences, I would say about half the class looks up 1.91 in the table and half the class looks up 1.92. So um, just a heads up that just round to two decimal places immediately for this one. And then remember, if you have the big calculator, you can do all of this in one prop Z test. It will do the whole thing for you. You just need to put in what your null value is, what your sample had as the number of successes in a size, and then what alternative you care about. And don't overthink this. This is saying the real proportion is greater than our value which is exactly what we have here. So it'll match exactly what you have. Um, and then if you calculate, it gives you out that same z-score of 0.89, which what do, I just want to see what we just had. Slightly different because of rounding. Again, cutting that off even after four decimal places is getting us a slightly different number than we got using the test in the calculator, which is why we need to make sure if we're going to keep two decimal places on our actual value that we make sure um, to have four on any piece that we're using as a calculation. So if you're doing this by hand, we now have our z-score and we're gonna go to our z table to look it up. If you watched my previous videos, you know I'm bad and lazy um, and I have a cheat where I just look up the negative 0.89. Uh, that is because I realized that we we're gonna be doing a tail if I wanted to be really good about this, there's technically a normal distribution going on here. We're interested in seeing how likely is it to get a z-score of 0.89. And right off the bat, I'm going, it's pretty dang likely. We're not even one standard deviation away from the mean. So this is not looking good for the home team. Um, and then you've got your greater than here, which tells us we're doing a right-tailed test. So this is our p-value. So we could use normal CDF, we could use the table. Um, if you are following my, my way of doing things, I typically just look up the negative because that's where tails are on our table. Uh, let me go grab a table because I don't have one. All right, so this table looks slightly different than ours. It's just kind of cuter, I think, in terms of font, but it's the same idea. I would be looking on a standard normal table that has z-scores and rz was 0.89. But I realize if I go to 0.89, I'm getting out uh, to the positives. I'm getting out values bigger than half, and I wanted a tail. So I'm going to look up negative 0.89. So my p-value is 0.1867. So let me find our lecture notes. Bloop, bloop, bloop. P-value is 0.1867. And this might be slightly different than what you get in the calculator, but I do all of my questions both ways. Um, if ever you end up with a value that's off just in this thousands place, 10 thousands place, oops, that's not my highlighter, um, often just this last decimal, uh, don't worry, it's probably a difference between a calculator and a table. So um, I think I use calculator for most of the stuff that I've created in this class. So it might be slightly different if you're using the table. Um, so with this p-value, we're going to make and justify our statistical decision. So our p-value, as we discussed, is humongous because we had a not very unusual z-score. And we're comparing this to an alpha of 10%. Even at the most generous alpha, our p-value is greater. So we don't get to reject the null. We do not have evidence. We're going to fail to reject the null. And whenever you fail to reject the null... And again, remember, this greater than is not related to that greater than. This is a claim that it's higher. And this is our assessing the evidence to say, oh, nope, we don't have evidence. Um, when I fail to reject the null, my conclusion here is going to start with there 
is insufficient or not enough, whatever you want to write here, let's do insufficient just to be different from my usual. Insufficient evidence. So that is from the fail to reject the null. Remember, I said if you want to get a bonus on the test, you're going to say at a significance level of 10% and then start your sentence. And then this is all about that alternative hypothesis, right? There is insufficient evidence to conclude or to show or to prove whatever you want to use in terms of your wording there to support um, that the true proportion of first failures. And right now I'm just going back to this last sentence of this whole thing or our alternative, right? So I'm just going to match that essentially because that's what we're trying to prove. So, the, oh, I wrote portion instead of proportion. Whoa. The true proportion of first failures for sports cars is, and then here's where you, you have some stylistic choice. You can either say is higher than all passenger cars and match the wording of the question, or I always uh, look and see which one's going to be less writing. Uh, so I'm going to say is more than uh, 0.3. Same thing, but you could also write higher than for all passenger cars. Uh, either would work. So there is your last example of a hypothesis test for proportions. I think I might have one more in the duality section, but I hope not. I don't remember.